I just found out they installed a statue of the Grinch in Withenshaw Park. I'm so excited! The Grinch! <laughs> Know what you're thinking? That's not the Grinch. The Grinch is a lovable character created by Theodore Geisel. He's like the unfortunate love child of Suella Braverman and Oscar the Grouch. So why did I bring you to see this guy? Well, this guy really did steal Christmas, and he didn't give it back. He stole Christmas. He outlawed dancing. He outlawed singing. He outlawed drinking. And worst of all, he outlawed football. So who is this guy? And more importantly, why is there a statue of him in Manchester? That's right, it's Oliver Cromwell. And he really did ban Christmas. From 1649 to 1660, England was a republic ruled by Oliver Cromwell. They had executed the king, Charles I, after a bloody civil war. Cromwell had become king in all but name. The period is seen as an early flowering of English democracy by some, or as a very dark period in history by others. Sculpted by Matthew Noble, it was the first statue of Cromwell to be unveiled in the country. The statue was originally erected in 1875 outside Manchester Cathedral. It would have been the first thing that you would have seen as you entered the city from the now defunct Exchange Station. The project, including its intended site in Manchester's new town hall, was contentious, exposing political and religious divisions within the community, reinforcing the view that the reassessment of Cromwell's place in the making of modern Britain was far from settled. Controversial to this day, he is considered a Republican hero to some and a ruthless tyrant to others. Plans for a statue of Cromwell in Manchester were first suggested in 1860 by Thomas Goadsby, who became mayor of Manchester in 1861. He was married to Elizabeth Salisbury Grime. Elizabeth, through Thomas, became involved in the commissioning of two statues, one being Prince Albert, the other Oliver Cromwell, two very incongruous characters. During this period, Oliver Cromwell was viewed as a champion of public reform by liberal radicals. Manchester was a radical supporter of Parliament during the Civil War, and it was a group of liberal politicians who agitated for a statue. Cromwell probably never set foot in Manchester. It was what Cromwell represented that attracted the liberals of the city. Many liberals saw him as an ideal symbol of their progressive city. Wherever liberals and nonconformists took power in Britain, Cromwell's stock rose. Thomas Goadsby died in 1866, and two years later, Elizabeth married widower and fellow councillor of Thomas, Abel Haywood. Abel was twice mayor of Manchester, and is famous for the building of a new town hall. Queen Victoria was no fan either. Cromwell had executed her ancestor, Charles I. She refused to come to the opening of the new town hall unless it was removed. It wasn't, so she didn't. It was nicknamed the pedestrian's friend. It was sighted in the middle of a busy road. There was pressure for its removal from those who saw it as a traffic hazard. It finally fell victim to a one-way traffic scheme in 1968, and it was removed to Withenshaw Park, where it faces Withenshaw Hall. A final irony, Cromwell's forces came into direct conflict with the Tattons when they attempted to capture Withenshaw Hall in the winter of 1643. Robert Tatton defended the house for three months with the help of friends and servants until two cannons were sent by road from Manchester and the house was captured. The Tattons fled to Chester. Withenshaw Hall was eventually returned to the family several years later in return for the payment of a large fine. 
Almost immediately, the statue was dabbed with paint, the first of a number of acts of vandalism that included the removal of Cromwell's sword. Most recently, he has been graffitied again in the wake of the George Floyd murder. Manchester Council have announced they will review every statue in the city in response to the Black Lives Matter protest. I feel these statues have a place in today's world. They shouldn't be boxed up and hidden away in museums. There's plenty of information about Cromwell in those places. One day, I was walking through this park, and I saw this statue and thought to myself, why is there a statue of Oliver Cromwell here? Did he live here? It was enough to seek out all this information and make this little video. So let's keep our history on our sleeve. It may not be pretty, but it should be remembered and spoken of. And if the statue gets graffitied or knocked into the canal, it becomes part of the story. It's not a priceless relic, but the story is. <laughs>